Okay, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to produce a Gantt chart using Microsoft Excel. Um, Gantt charts are quite useful in design technology, but also they're, they're used in a range of other uh, areas of um, project management effectively. Um, but we use them in design technology quite a lot to uh, talk about the, the order of our projects, or maybe even to talk about the stages involved in the manufacturer product as part of a manufacturing specification. So in the example here, a student has produced um, a, a Gantt chart effectively that is taking them through the various stages of producing their product. As you can see, we've got the tasks or processes down one side. We have time going across the top. They've presumably done this in terms of lessons and then individual times underneath. So I'm going to give you a bit of an idea about how to produce one of these using Microsoft Excel. Um, what we're looking at generally in the, uh, the Gantt chart I'd say is we obviously want to put all the stages uh, for making the project or it could be the stages of the project if we're talking about project management and including uh, accurate timings across the top for how long each uh, stage will take and ideally because these things should be kind of working documents as you go through the project we should see amendments and changes being added to these um, I advise my students though very few of them actually do this um, I advise them to print the Gantt chart out uh, stick it to their wall and then use that and stick to it as a project management as they take their way through the projects uh, because this shows the examiner you're actually using um, the, uh, the Gantt chart to help you uh, guide your, your project and keep it to schedule. Now in design technology um, the reason we might want to do uh, manufacturing specification effectively is because of uh, this down the bottom okay um, where it says part of our manufacturing specification. So a manufacturing specification what you're doing is you're giving the uh, manufacturer all the information they need to produce your project. Now part of that might be uh, a, a plan for manufacture or just breaking down all the, the stages and processes involved to give them more understanding of how it's made and one way of presenting this is in a Gantt chart. There's a multitude of other ways you could do this. I see step-by-step -step plans and flow charts and things like this as well as uh, working drawings and general arrangement drawings and things like this but I'd say a Gantt chart is quite useful uh, as a, a way of building up a, an effective manufacturing spec. Um, a level design technology um, in section B there it clearly says what we want is a detailed project management approach to prototype development and um, I believe here we go we've got a bit on time management there and obviously because the Gantt chart we uh, we include a schedule alongside it it shows you're thinking about time management and again if you edit it as you go along it's going to show that you are actually using this to keep to uh, the schedule of your project and also in um, A level in a latter stage, so in section C, development of the uh, design process, uh, proposals there, we're talking about project management gain down the bottom here. Um, and basically, uh, if we just underline this little bit, allows further development uh, in response to ongoing evaluation. There again, uh, and there we go, consideration of contingency planning. There again, we're talking about the need for amendments to the Gantt chart kind of as we're going through as well. Okay, so just going to hop into uh, Microsoft uh, Excel here. So here's a very, very simple uh, Gantt chart um, that I've produced here. So the elements that I've included, basically we have a title for the Gantt chart there. Down the side here we have the processes. I'm just going to merge that cell there. So down the, the side there we have the processes um, outlined here. We have, I'm, I'm using dates here. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you want to do this. And in this particular case, this shows like a working week. And you might have at GCSE, for example, about three hours a week. You might have more. But you can see I've got a week there and we've got some uh, hours underneath there. Okay. Down the side I've done a very, very basic sort of plan so I don't know perhaps this is making a key ring or something like this so we've got designing on CAD laser cutting parts quality controlling and finishing parts assembling the product and packaging the product and across here you can see there is time so what we're saying here is designing parts using uh, CAD is taking one to three hours okay and it's happening in this this week here 6th of April 2020 okay now once that time is gone obviously what we do is we ignore these cells there and we move on to the next cell when we're doing the next stage in this case it is laser cutting parts and what I'm saying is the first stage there we go is going to take three hours that time is gone and then we start from the next part here and we're laser cutting parts and that's going to take two hours okay now there might be some instances where you might do something like uh, this and what this basically means 
is two things are happening concurrently at the same time okay so in this case where I'm laser cutting parts it might be that once I've set the laser cutter up and I've got it running I can start on quality control and finishing some of the parts as they come out of the laser cutter so those two things are happening at the same time therefore they can both happen within hour two of this this week here okay And now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, creating this Gantt chart using Excel. So the first thing I'm going to do is type my title in. I've typed it up here, so I'm just going to cheat a little bit and uh, copy and paste it in. But I put the title for my Gantt chart, so something sensible there. In this case, it's for the production of a project. Okay. Now underneath that, I'm going to put my processes like this. Okay. And then I'm going to put my first date for my first week commencing in there. Okay, so I've just opened up the calendar here to find this, and there we go, my first date there is the 6th of April 2020. My second date there is the 13th of April 2020. Okay, so I'm gonna put in 06, 04, 2020, okay? Now you could, if you want, you can go into the format of the cells here, you can go to number, and then you can choose different formats if you want the date in a particular way, but I'm happy with that, it's quite simplistic. And I'm gonna copy, uh, sorry, I'm gonna now decide how many lessons I've got in this week. So if I've got perhaps um, three hours, as I said, above the top, I'm gonna to type one, to three along the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is highlight this top cell where it says the date, drag it across to those three cells and click merge and center. Okay, so what I've got there is that week and three hours or three separate time slots in that week, okay? I'm now gonna do the same for my second week. So 13th of April, 2020 and underneath, I'm gonna this time save myself a bit of time. I'm gonna copy one, two, three and paste it in there. And then once more, like before, I'm gonna merge those cells. Now, the reason why I've done this, those two weeks, is what I wanna do is save myself a lot of time because I'm gonna drag these dates across and Excel will do this. So I'm gonna select those two uh, weeks that are next to each other. I've gotta hold my cursor next to this tiny little dot in the corner where the plus sign comes up and then drag this across. Now, what that's done then is it's put these weeks in they are one week apart using the first day in the week. In this case, I'm starting a Monday there, week commencing to drag that across. Now, all I need to do now is then copy my one, two, three. I'm gonna just copy and paste these across like this. So I'm just copying the one, two, three like that, and then making sure it goes into every cell. Highlighting the three, copy, control V, paste, control C is copy, obviously like that. And there we go, we've got the basics of our process there. So now you'd go down and you'd start writing in your processes, okay? So I'm gonna start down here, okay? I'm gonna merge those two cells together because obviously that part is the processes. And I'm gonna center up that just to make it look a bit more ordered. Okay, so down here, I'll put my stages for making my project, okay? And that'll be different for each, uh, each one of you. But we're gonna use these ones at the top just for speed uh, of this purpose here. So I've pasted those down there. Now, the last thing you wanna do is once you've sort of got the basic layout like this is start thinking about the format. So I've got some different colors here and stuff like this, okay? Now the first thing we wanna do is get over, select the whole, um, the whole table there like this, right click it, go to format cells there, and we're gonna sort out the border. I like to use a solid border on the outline there, so I click the solid border and click outline, that draws a border around the outside of the cells, which is gonna go around here like this, and I like to use a smaller line on the inside like this, and it just keeps it nice and orderly. Now we can see the title there looks a bit ugly because it's just overlapping the cell and things like this. Now I want that title to be extended out and be merged into the center of the cell so it's nice and clear. I also want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna raise the text up here and I'm going to make it bold by pressing control B like this or using the bold icon up here okay I'm also going to embolden these um, texts here because they are kind of titles and things like that and that makes it a little bit clearer and as you can see here I've done some colors now I suggest using color because it just makes it look a little bit clearer to read again, okay? But I like to use quite subtle colors. So depending on what you what you want to use, maybe I'll use blue this time, for example. I might use a dark color for the, the top like this, and then I might use a slightly lighter color going down, staying within the same colorway. We don't want lots of different colors going on like this. And then I might choose to color in the boxes for the stages here 
in a lighter color. So I'm just gonna very quickly go across. You wanna take a little bit of time thinking about how long these processes take, um, but obviously thinking about overlapping cells and stuff like this as you're going forwards. Now, what you can see up here, I've put in an area that's there's school break. So you're probably gonna have holidays and things like this as you're going through your project. And you wanna take account of these when you're making your Gantt chart. So all I'm gonna do there is just select a whole cell there and imagine there's a school break going on like this. And I'm gonna put in there school break you could put in holiday or whatever you want for this particular um, uh, thing and I'm gonna again put it in the center of the cell like this and make that a little bit bigger and like above I've chosen a different color a contrasting color to make it really clear that during that time there's not going to be any activities going on I can then carry on coloring in my cell in terms of predicting the uh, stages as we go forward. So there's the basic Gantt chart produced there. It's hopefully quite a simplistic way to do this. So there's lots of other complicated ways that you can do this um, using uh, tables and then using the graph in uh, Wizards on um, Excel. But I like this, this method because I think it's quite clear and it's quite easy to edit and change at a later stage when you inevitably want to make changes to this um, as uh, for, well, for contingency reasons as the project go forward. Okay, So there's a, a very basic um, way to produce a Gantt chart but hopefully it's quite effective and quite quick and might help you out either in key stage 4 or key stage 5 or even if you're uh, producing a Gantt chart for other reasons for managing a project of some sort. Okay, good luck.